More than 50% of my career so far was spent making slides. So to cut my slide making time in half, I use keyboard shortcuts. In today's video, I'm going to share my top 20 slide making keyboard shortcuts. I'm going to get you going right now with my favorite one. And if you take nothing else away from this video, please take away this one. If you're anything like me, then you probably have multiple windows open on your PC at the same time, like Excel, multiple PowerPoint presentations, your browser. If you wanna flip between open windows without having to scroll to the bottom of your screen and using these icons, hit Alt and Tab. This way you can easily toggle between open windows on your laptop. So in this case, I can easily copy and paste something from one PowerPoint presentation to the next using Alt Tab. Hi there, if you are new to this channel, my name is Ramona Moodley. I'm a former McKinsey consultant turned executive coach. And I make videos sharing tips and tricks that I wish I knew sooner in my career. So if you want to make your work life easier, please consider subscribing. These shortcuts are in PowerPoint on PC, but if you use Google Slides or have a MacBook, then download my printable shortcuts in the video description below. These shortcuts are different based on what you use to make your slides. These are my top 20 shortcuts and you can find this in your download. We're gonna work through all 20 of them through some quick exercises. First, we'll start with our make shortcuts. And this is when you want to make more shapes, make lines, um, or resize shapes. So our first is a very simple control C, control V, and I'm going to try and make multiple versions of this bunny by going first control, hitting control, and then C, and then control V to paste. And then as you can see, I now have two bunnies. I'm going to select them both, and then again, say control C, and then control V, and now I've got more. And so I can keep repeating that process until I have 10. Next is copying something but in a straight line. So you could see from our bunny example that these bunnies were being placed all over the place. But if I want to copy something and I need it to be in a straight line, I hit, I click on the object and then hit shift, control, and then drag the object forward. So I'm holding down shift, I'm holding down control, and then I'm dragging the object forward. This me this will not let me copy this object in any other direction but straight or up and down from its location. It's almost locked in place. So I could move it up in a straight line and I can move it sideways in a straight line, but I cannot move it diagonally. Next up, we have making a straight line line. If I want to make a line, I go up here to insert, I go to shapes, and then I select a line. Now I can draw a line. If I try and draw a line straight, you can see that I'm able to draw a line in any direction. But if I want a line to be straight, all I do is click shift, and then it locks and then drag the line back and forth, and it kind of locks the line in. It will not let me move the line up or down as long as shift is engaged. Next is resizing something, but in proportion. So here I have a balloon and if I click on it, I can resize it using this. But if I just drag, you can see that I'm going to stretch the shape and not resize it in proportion. So if resizing in proportion is important to me, what I do is click shift and then drag and this Regardless of how I try to resize the shape, it will always be resized in proportion. So it's shift and then drag to resize in proportion. All right, so that's it for our make shortcuts. Now let's move on to our move shortcuts. And this is all about moving shapes or text around. If I want to move this car along, the usual way to do it is just to simply click on it, but then you notice here that if I do this, I can move it in all dimensions up and down. But if I like its vertical position and I just want to move it along horizontally while keeping its vertical position, I need to hit shift and then click on the object and now I can move it along. And now when I move my mouse up and down in a zigzag, 
the car can only move front and back, but in the same vertical position. This also works with the up and down position, where I can move it up and down in a straight line, or I can move it left to right in a straight line, but I cannot move it in any other way. All right, next up, we want to align these birds to the top. And all I have to do here is select them and then open the Align Distribute menu. So all I do is select them and then hit Alt H G A and it opens up the menu that I need. And now I just need to tap T for Align Top to get these birds to align to the highest bird. If we move over here to these turtles, if I want to align these to the bottom, again, all I need to do is tap Alt H G A and it opens up this handy menu and I need to press B for bottom and they're aligned to the bottom. If you wanna distribute all of these horizontally so that they're equally spaced horizontally. I can select the birds again, just tap Alt, H, G, A, and H for horizontal. Now the birds are equally spaced. And then similarly with the turtles, again, just Alt, H, G, A, H, and the turtles are distributed equally. Next up is bullet points and being able to quickly move them around and change the order. So here we have a few line items for a recipe and they're not in order. So to move them around, I just click anywhere on the line that I'd like to move and then hold down shift and alt and then tapping on the arrow key will move the bullet point up and down. So I need that to go up to the top and then I'm going to do the same with number two. So again, shift, alt, you're holding those down while you're tapping the up and down key and you can move that bullet point around. Lastly is for our move shortcuts is sending an object forward or backward. So here I've got a tree and a house and if I'd like to put this house behind the tree, all I need to do is click on it and then select and then hit Hold down control, shift, and the square brackets. And then I can play around with the open and closed square brackets to move the tree in front of and behind the house. Next we have our write shortcuts and these all have to do with working with text in PowerPoint. So if we want to select words, the one way to do it is using our mouse and just dragging across, but it's sometimes more accurate and faster to use our keyboard. So to do this, we just hit the shift key and hold that down while using the arrow keys to select the words that we need. Next up is bold underlining and italicizing. So here I'm gonna use that shift arrow trick again, just to select the first few words, make this bold, and I'm gonna hit and hold down control and then B to make this bold. Next up, I hit shift and use my arrow key. And then I hit control, hold that down and U to underline. And then lastly for italicize, I select this and then hold down control and I to italicize. Next up is another one of my favorites, and this is really helpful when you make a slide and you have a lot of white space and you want to resize the text. So here I select the text that I need, and to resize all of this text, I just hit Control, Shift, and I'm holding those down. And then I use the greater than and equal to signs. And if I just keep tapping on the greater than sign, this text will keep increasing in size until I am happy with it. And if I wanna decrease the size, again, I just hold down control, hold down shift, and then use 
the greater than and equal uh, the greater than or less than signs to change that font size. So I can go down or I can go up. And then lastly is to make something superscript. And this is really helpful for when we want to make a footnote. So for this, we know the usual formula, E equals MC squared. I'd like to make the two a superscript. So I'm gonna select it and then I'm gonna hold down control shift and hit the plus sign. And then we have that two becoming superscript. I can also reverse that by doing control shift and hitting plus again, and then it returns it to the bottom. Now we have our format shortcuts. And here I'm gonna start with grouping and ungrouping. So here I have these straight lines. And it's really helpful to group them if I want to resize them all at the same time to connect the dots on the left to the do dots on the right. So I'm go going to say select them and then go control G and that groups them. And then I can simply drag them across and they all will be resized at the same time. And if I want to ungroup them, I just hit Control, Shift, and G, and now they are ungrouped. Next up, we have selecting multiple objects at the same time. Now to do this, if you want to resize an object, you can simply use your mouse and then select, drag it over the objects you would like. But this is difficult in a situation like this when you've got various objects kind of intermingled between others. So the other way to do it is just to use shift and then you click on each object that you'd like. So I want to just select all the butterflies. So I'm holding down shift and then clicking with my mouse on all of these butterflies. And then I'm going to move them all up at the same time so that those are flying. Okay, then we can select all the objects on a page or all the text in a box using the control A command. So I put my cursor on this text in this text box and then press control A, which stands for all, to select all the text in this box. And now I can do something with it like deleting it or I could make it bolder using control B. I could make it bigger using shift, control, and the greater than sign. Or I could make it smaller do it using shift, control, and the smaller than sign. Okay, and now for this last one, the copy and paste formatting. So I've got a shape here, and I'd like to copy its formatting to the other two sticky notes I have on this page. So very simply, I just hit Control Shift and I hold those down and press C for copy. And then I select the other two objects. And then again, to paste it, I hold down Control Shift and B and it pastes that formatting over. Now we have our four admin shortcuts. And here I'm going to go back to my first favorite shortcut, which we covered already, which was the Alt tab. And here I am going to just hold on Alt and then press Tab to toggle to this Excel and then press Control C to copy this Alt tab to take me back and then select this and say Control V to paste. Control S is really handy just to hit occasionally to make sure that you, you keep saving your PowerPoint as you go so you don't lose anything. And so I like to hit Control S every five minutes or so. And then Control P when I need to print something very simply. And then lastly is Control Z and Control Y, which are really fun and useful, not only for PowerPoint, but also for Word and Excel. So here I'm going to make this heart red using Shapeful up here. And then to make the sun red also, all I need to do is select it and then hit Control Y. What that does is just repeat 
the prior function that we did. So anything that we do that we want to repeat again on another shape, we just need to hit Control Y. Control Z undoes anything that we just did, and that's really helpful. And you can repeat that command over and over again to undo multiple actions to get back to a prior starting point. So in this case, I will hit Control Z. It makes that sun black again. And if I hit Control Z again, the heart will go black. And if I hit it again, it will change that text up at the top of the page. The please like and subscribe will change back to what it used to be. Now let's bring it all together and make a slide together. I love saving time on making slides, which is why I never start from scratch and always start from a template. So this is my favorite slide templates that I use the most often, and you have access to these in the video description. So I'm going to use one of these templates, but a really, really messy version. I very often get slides like this from people and then have to quickly use my shortcuts to fix them. So let's see what we have here. You can see that there's a lot of things misaligned. They seem to be random text boxes that are associated with each of these icons, but they're not evenly distributed. They're not aligned. The text is in different sizes. Um, and I can see that even though this is placeholder text. So let's clean up the slide and then we'll add our own text um, into it. So right here, I want to group these icons with their circle backgrounds first so that we can manipulate them. And I click on it and then I select both the icon and the circle and then hit Control G. This just groups it. And then I'm going to group each icon with its relevant text by hitting Control G after selecting. Great. Now I'm going to place this top one where I would like it to be, and then where I would like the rest of them to be evenly distributed to. So I'm going to place this bottom one more or less where I'd like it. And then just to make sure it's aligned with the one on top, I'm just going to go Alt, H, G, A, and left to left align it. Then with these other two, I'll do the same. I want to make sure the left aligned to the top. And so I have to move it slightly to the right, just to make sure that when I left align, it locks in to the left. So I select them all and I say Alt H G A L and that aligns to the left. Now let's evenly distribute these. So I'm going to now select all and again, Alt H G A and I'm distributing vertically. So I'm going to go V and that makes those all equally distributed. All right, that's it for this video. Let me know what your favorite shortcut is in the comments below and like and subscribe if you have not done so already. I'm looking forward to seeing you in the next video.